Hi, I'm John Griesbach with Diamond H2O. Today I'd like to go through rebuilding of your 2-inch Patriot water softener. First off, just to confirm that you have a 2-inch uh, Patriot. Uh, I would start with a DCS6 would be your model number, and then it will give you your capacity uh, number, which will be three digits. Then it'll be a dash 200. That would indicate that it's a 2-inch water softener. Um, what we're going to focus on today is rebuilding of the piston seals and spacers. So to start, what you're going to do is remove your cover. You've got two tabs on either side. You're just going to remove those. This unit obviously is not plugged in. However, what you're going to do is you'll remove any cables that are coming through your back plate. Your motor cable will stay plugged in. Any other cables are going to become unplugged. What you can then do is if you look at the front of your display, there's a space up top. For your index fingers, if you put your index fingers in these slots right there, your thumbs will be directly underneath these tabs. So what you're going to do is put your index fingers in these, these spots and flip these tabs up with your thumbs. I just did it in reverse. So what it'll do is it'll bring loose your drive bracket. With all your wires unplugged, this drive bracket, including your, uh, your circuit board, will come undone. What I recommend at this point is take your cover and your circuit board drive bracket assembly, move it as far away from where you're working as possible as not to get it wet um, and not to knock it off of a brine tank, which is uh, most common table uh, when working on a water softener. What that does is it exposes your back plate. On your back plate, what you're going to find is that there is two tabs on your back plate. Now, some of the older systems do not have these tabs for you to easily push your fingers on. You just have to use a flathead screwdriver, a small flathead, to just pry them in. On the new ones, um, you know, they've been doing this for several years now. Um, they're easy tabs for your thumbs or your fingers. All you do is you squeeze them in, one on either side, squeeze them in, your back plate turns, comes right off. Again, set that to the side. Don't have to really worry about damage to that. What it does is it exposes on your two inch valve, it exposes four Allen screws. On your inch and a half, inch and a quarter, and one inch valves, what you're gonna find is that there are no screws, you actually have a, a separate wrench that is used. Uh, that's why we wanna focus on this two inch today. Take your Allen wrench, what you're gonna do is you're gonna remove all four bolts. Now, before you remove the bolts, you're going to want to make sure that you've depressurized the system. If the system has not been depressurized at this point, no worries. You don't have to put it back together to depressurize it. What you're going to need to do is you just manually rotate this white disc. That'll pull or push your piston in or out. What that'll do is you'll hear water go down the drain. Water should stop. If you don't hear the water stop, your inlet or outlet valve have not been closed yet. Make sure you close them then relieve the pressure, and not, then you can proceed with removing your screws. If you remove the screws before relieving pressure, you're going to get wet. So we'll just pop these out of here. And again, to do a rebuild like this, which you, you know, things that you don't have to worry about, um, number one, you don't have to worry about taking it off the top of your water softener. Um, a lot of people in the past have taken, you know, they, they're concerned because they want to take their valve completely off the top of the softener tank. That is absolutely fine um, if you prefer to do it that way. However, it is not necessary when replacing the piston uh, and the uh, seals stack. Almost done here. One more left. All right, with all of the bolts removed, what you have is your end cap assembly pull straight out. Now, two things are going to either happen. In most cases, your seals and stack assembly will stay in the valve. It'll, they'll stay in and your piston will come out separately. However, that's not the case all the time. As you can see, this is a used valve. It's been out there. It's dirty. It's crusty. The piston's in rough shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate, separate the piston 
from the seal stack. What you're going to find is in this case, the piston was actually broke. This is your brine piston that controls your, the water that comes and goes to your brine tank, and it's broken. It clips in the back here, typically, as you see here with this new piston. Clips together, real clean, real nice. This one does not. Now you can do one of two things. You can unclip it. As you'll notice, you don't have to worry about clipping it in on the wrong side, simply because it only goes in one way. They're sized different, so this will only clip into one side of your piston. Not all the time do you have to change this cap. If it's not leaking, if there's no damage, if everything looks good and is moving clean, the gears look good on the front, not a lot of reason to change it. So what you can do is you can go ahead and take your new piston, attach it to your drive cap. It's now ready to be inserted. Next step, you've got your old seal and spacer stack that may be stuck in there. I've even seen it with chloramines and some real rough uh, chlorinated water the stacks actually come out in pieces. What you're looking for on the stacks to determine quality is not debris uh, in the cages. You're looking to see how do my O-rings look on the outside? How do my seals look on the inside? One thing you may notice here, the new stacks have black internal seals. The old ones had white. The white ones you do not want to lubricate with any type of silicone product. They're lubricated with the water any black o-ring you can lubricate. So on all the new ones you can lubricate with uh, silicone lubricant, the old ones you cannot. What you're looking for is you're looking for integrity of these seals. In most cases what you're going to find, out, find is that the internal seals you may find one tore. They're quad seals so they got two lips on the inside and a lot of times you'll find one with a lip ripped, uh, maybe completely off, maybe it's just uh, hanging there, maybe it's tore. Um, in this case things look very dried out. They, they feel a little rough, they're not very pliable. So in this case, we're going to replace the stack. To replace the stack, all you do is remove the old, insert the new, that's it. You're ready to go to insert, reinsert your piston. To insert your piston, slide it in. Again, very clean, very easy. One suggestion, again, lubrication is nice. Any O-rings that are of the black seal style, it's a good practice to just make sure you have a small amount of lubrication on them. Next step, to, before you tighten down your bolts, you're going to want to make sure that your tabs that you squeezed in earlier on the sides are located on the sides again. If you have them 90 degrees off, what's going to end up happening is your back plate is going to be mounted on there sideways. Now this isn't always uh, a bad thing. Uh, in some cases when the valves are mounted sideways uh, as a side mount adapter, uh, if it's mounted to the side of the tank, you may find that that actually becomes helpful for you rather than looking at it sideways. Typically what you're going to find is on the top of a tank you're going to want it to be right side up with the cover facing this way. So what you're going to do is you'll locate your tabs on the side and reinsert your screws. Because there's only four screws, what we typically recommend is getting them started, then tightening them no different than you would a, a tire on a car. You're going to want to alternate. You're not going to want to tighten down one completely. You're going to kind of want to just alternate back and forth and work your way around, um, slowly tightening and drawing that piston in as not to uh, get anything in there uh, sideways and potentially break something or have a seal that doesn't seat completely. So as we draw this in I'll turn it sideways and you can kind of see how the piston is drawing in. Now, And all you're going to do is you're going to tighten it down until the piston cap drive assembly is tightened flush with the brass casting of this valve. So we're drawing it in. Again, very simple process. Tighten it down.
what you can do then, once all your screws have been snugged down, you can verify that they're all tight. To make your drive bracket mounting a little bit easier, go ahead and just draw your piston in by just rotating your cam or rotating the large white gear. You'll see it's a worm gear, it goes in and out. Just draw it in, that way it's not in the way when you go to put your uh, drive bracket or your uh, electronics bracket back on. Put the back plate back on, again you can get it upside down. What you want to make sure is the wires are coming in or the holes for the wires are coming in on the top. Your clips that your thumbs popped off to get your drive bracket off should be on the top. Like this, clips in place, locks in. What you're going to have is two feet in the bottom. Put them on your tabs. You can confirm that it's in on both sides just by letting it hang there to see if it, it, it uh, stays. Clips in. Make sure you're clipped on both sides completely. If you do have wires coming in the back through your chaseways, what you want to do is make sure they're up top here. And you want to make sure that when you push this back, that it clips in completely. If, you do not, if it does not clip in completely, you may or may not notice. It may look clipped. It may sound clipped. But what you're going to find is when you power it up, cycle it through, you're going to get an error. So in an effort to avoid that, just make sure everything's out of the way. Clips in solid. Go ahead and reattach any wires that you disconnected earlier. And put your cover on. Now you're ready to cycle it through. If there's any questions, feel free to reach us at 1-800-236-8931. Or you can always check us out at diamondh2o.com. Thank you.